Now, once you are trying to test, you test the grip. There are various types of grips. I need not go into the details of them. Power grip, hook grip, check grip, all those things. The grip strength will decrease. So, whenever the patient tries to write, he will feel pain. Whenever the patient is trying to squeeze something, he will feel pain. Whenever the patient is trying to put coffee into the saucer and cup, he will feel pain. Whenever the patient is trying to ring, he will feel pain. Whenever the patient is taking a lota and going for 1 plus 2, he will feel pain. That is jug. Okay? Or even taking a jug from the rack, he will feel pain. All these are for grip strength. The clinical test. Most important test you need to remember for your NEAT or any other purpose is this Cosen's test and Mills maneuver. What is Cosen's test? You extend the elbow and flex the wrist joint. You are stretching the extensor carpi radialis brevis. You will have pain there. Right? It is an elicitation of the pain. This is Cosen's test for tennis elbow. Second is Mills maneuver. You do a pronation of a supinated elbow, you will have pain there. That is Mills maneuver. Simple. They are all provocative tests. X rays will be usually normal, MRI will never be written in. <laughs> in these tests, there are most often it is clinical diagnosis. There is a differential diagnosis, radial tunnel syndrome, uh, wherein the radial nerve is entrapped. Panner's disease, I told you what is Panner's disease? It is osteochondritis of capitulum and radio capitular arthritis. Usually, these are all the differential diagnosis that come into picture. And how do you manage? Usually, the management is conservative, non operative. 99 percent of the times, we do not operate. What do you do? So, first you identify what is the cause, is it acute or chronic? First, you do that. Then, first you identify whether it is tennis elbow or not by doing those examinations. And then, once you plan for a management, you start here. First, rest, rest to this portion, give rest. If you can put a cast, that is very much ideal, but no patient will agree for you to put a cast. Then starts here, starts from ice, rest ice, put ice, if it is not working, put heat. Okay. So both of them have equally good amount of uh, relief of pain with respect to tennis elbow. Some people have, uh, in the earlier days, some people have started doing needling, acupuncture type of therapy there. You needle it, what happens? New fresh blood comes there and it has a lot of fibroblast growth factor. These fibroblast growth factors, they go and form new collagen, hence bridging up the gap. That was the theory. right? The, the best treatment protocol, what usually I follow is ultrasonic therapy. It gives very good relief. When combined with other modalities of treatment like rest, activity modification, and counter force bracing. What is counter force bracing? Anyhow, NSAIDs will be used. Whenever patient comes to orthopedic surgeon, by default, most of us will be forced to use NSAIDs because if you do not write NSAIDs, patient will not come again. It becomes a homeopathy modality of treatment. Why NSAIDs is if the patient is in pain, your prime duty is to decrease the pain. Hence, we write NSAIDs, not just like that. Okay? Not, but thing is, you should at the same time, you should see to that all other modalities which are working well should be followed. Right? Here the counter force bracing, it is a brace which is applied 2 to 3 inches down, especially we take hardly 2 inches down, go there and apply a brace here like this. What does it do? It will not allow all the force of pull from the wrist joint, extensor carpi radialis brevis force will not be directly transmitted onto the origin and then cause pain. The counter force brace does that, right? And avoid of the avoidance of the causative activity is the most important thing. How do you avoid? do not do these things. right? So, the technique of playing makes a lot of difference. If you play backhand shots, all of the force comes and it strains your extensor carpi radialis brevis to uh, maintain the wrist joint in plane, so that you can play a nice shot like this. So, lot of strain will come onto the wrist joint and lot of strain will come onto the ECRB and ultimately tears over a period of time if you are keeping on playing these shots. Backhand shots cause this problem, especially either in cricket as well as in tennis. right? But if you can do this, see Tendulkar has already learned the way because he, he had those things and now he is wearing a counter force brace and again playing forehand shots. right? If you can play front, up front of your body, up front, in front of your body, what happens is your body also contributes to the uh, whatever the force that is coming as well as the force that you are applying will be matched, balanced and hence all the force will not come onto your this thing. right? If you can change your uh, treatment plan or your plan of playing, then that itself is an activity modification which will be useful. If they do not do it, even if you do 100 surgeries also again they will come back. 
even if you use 100 modalities of treatment again they will come back. So, activity modification rest right and then ultrasound therapy and analytics at the same time all the other modalities what have been described there if at all which is working well one method works for one surgeon one method works for other surgeons, but most often the commonest things is rest this thing if all of these things are not working what we usually do is the last method what we usually do is this where has it gone yeah usually we give intra lesional steroid with or without an anesthetication ultimately you end up in steroids because there is an inflammation first cut down the inflammation because that inflammation is causing nonsensic pain. So, you give intra lesional steroid, but unfortunately that steroid will decrease the pain <coughs> and inflammation for time being, but it increases the pathology by degrading the collagen. So, steroid is no answer to these pathologies ultimately the answer is one rest to activity modification three ultrasound therapy and counter force bracing fourth thing is physiotherapy good physiotherapy should be done to strengthen this muscle so that it does not give way so easily to these forces. How do you strengthen you do a physiotherapy where you take this bottle like this okay? do not do this exercises to strengthen your biceps and your forearm muscles do like this this is a good physiotherapy modality which strengthens your extensors and ultimately gives relief of what tennis elbow and another modality wherein you push it up like this. Okay, use other hand to force it down right and push it up. So, in an extended elbow if you can do this it is a good physiotherapy modality for your tennis elbow. If all these modalities are not working what do you do you go there open it debride excise the dead and granulation all those tissue and then freshen the edges of the ECSCRB, ECRB and then suture it back to the bone that is the surgery what usually we do right. A similar pathology that happens on the medial side of the elbow is called as golfer's elbow the treatment aspect is almost same for this also called as pitcher's elbow. A similar pathology again happens in the foot, but some modifications are there it is insertional tendinitis of the plantar fascia it is called as plantar fasciitis right almost the similar pathology as you see in tennis elbow it is called as plantar fasciitis wherein the patient comes with lot of pain in the heel and the pain in the heel will be maximum early in the morning the moment they try to put the step down that is called in step pain. Okay. They, they have a lot of pain and they tend to walk like this. Usually this is common in conditions where people are obese and putting a lot of weight on their heel one or they have a cavus foot or a planus foot, foot is not normal the, the, the mechanics of weight bearing are altered and ultimately the medial calcaneal tuberosity takes a lot of weight and ultimately the plantar fascia is stretched too much and there is an insertional tear over there and ultimately there is a chronic inflammation going on and you have chronic pain right what is the answer offload it or keep smooth pads underneath silicon gel soles best treatment because it is being pressed upon the inflamed tissue is pressed upon you have pain. So, if you can give rest to that part by putting silicon insole right silicon heel pad you have good relief of pain one second this is tender ugly stretching exercises they have been proved to be very much useful in treating the plantar fasciitis over a period of time. Next this is also a tendogly stretching exercise later on usually these uh, splints can be used at night right to keep it in that position. So, that patient is off the pain night splints next is ultrasonic therapy I told you same works here best better when it works for the tennis elbow the same pathology same treatment also works well said this is ultrasonic therapy at the end if it is not responding well you give intralesional steroid even if it is not responding for your intralesional steroid what do you do you go and cut it completely remove the plantar fascia from that attachment simple that is all about plantar fasciitis is it clear. Now, there is one this is another condition called as decurvin stenosynovitis what is steno tendon synovitis is synovial inflammation. So, all the tendons are in shade in sheath usually with these synovial sheaths. Now, decurvin stenosynovitis is one condition wherein the patient complains of pain over the radial distal aspect of the forearm here they will usually come with swelling tenderness pain and uh, uh, it will be of acute origin why it is happening it, this is a condition wherein uh, the first dorsal compartment which contains abductor pollicis longus APL and EPB extensor pollicis brevis these two tendons they go underneath this tunnel 
right at times these tendon sheaths are inflamed and uh, there is a constricting uh, band which is there over it and this constricting band will not allow these tendons to slide inside because there is a tenous synovitis that means there is a tendinitis may be there may not be there but there will be definitely synovitis that synovitis part which is there is is wanting a larger space but this tendon sheath is not allowing what will what will happen there is a constriction and you have pain because of inflammation as well as this constriction and these tendons cannot move freely within this tunnel now once you try to do move the tendon you will have lot of pain that is all about stenosing tenosynovitis conditions if it is happening in this first dorsal compartment usually we call it as decurvian stenosynovitis the inflammation may be because of rheumatoid inflammation or may be because of any other infection or may be because of no infection just an inflammation because of trauma it can happen it is mostly idiopathic it's mostly seen in diabetic patient and young girls mostly idiopathic so what do you do first thing you examine what is a test called as finkelstein's test right if you take the thumb into the palm and then do a radial ulnar deviation of the wrist you will have extreme pain on the radial side of the wrist <coughs> right this is called as finkelstein's test once you have done this finkelstein's test once you have diagnosed first you have to decrease the inflammation what do you do how do you decrease rest ice all those things which applied for tennis elbow also come here right once you have given rest ice and if it is not coming with ice over a period of time what do you do you give analgesic to you give analgesic for some time decrease the edema decrease or decrease the swelling inflammation over there and the best thing is go for surgery some people give intralesional steroid injection also but if it so happens that the steroid injection goes into the tendon there will be a tendon degeneration and the tendon will be cut there will be a laceration so usually there are people who advocate this intralesional or subsynovial or intrasynovial injection of the um, what i should say steroid low dose steroid they inject the steroid into the sheath actually there is a sheath in the sheath this tendon sir move they will not inject into the tendon they will inject into this space between the tendon and the sheath <coughs> so that the inflammation is off gone but thing is i don't advocate this i directly go for surgery give analgesics for one week decrease edema decrease the inflammation so that on operating table you don't have lot of blood loss usually you don't even use tonic also directly we, we give local anesthesia there and it's a 5 minute surgery release release that <coughs> thick and stenosing what first dorsal compartment which is harboring these two tendons and just free the tendons there abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis there ends the matter a similar pathology is trigger finger stenosing tenosynovitis of each and every finger you have a1 pulley there are various pulleys what is the use of these pulleys they keep the tendon close to the bone and makes the ten tendon act at each and every joint in a synchronized way so that you have a ultimate effect of this sort rather than bow stringing if the tendon is directly attached to here without any attachments here what will happen this will bow string like this right 